Welcome. Today's lesson is investigation for drawing geometric solids. What's our objective class? Get ready. Drawing geometric solids. solids and we're going to also draw parallel projections and multi-view projections. So there are no numbers in today's lesson. So if you are a picture person and you can see some 3D, you're really going to enjoy this lesson. So this is what we mean by a geometric solid. It could be a, a loaf of bread, it could be a cube of butter, it could be a building or a skyscraper. Most of our world is made up of geometric solids. A geometric solid has flat surfaces. So here's a polyhedron. This one right here has got a triangular base and uh, top. Picture a triangle that you, just a little triangle, and you pushed it into the mud and it penetrated through and created that triangular shape all the way through. That makes it a triangular prism. What is it called? Get ready. Triangular prism. Triangular prism. I'm going to put these in the show a little bit so you can see in real life what they look like. Here's a triangular prism. So here's the base, this yellow part. If I were holding like this, is this the base? It kind of, we're used to in our world thinking whatever it's sitting on is the base, but actually not when it comes to math. The base is this shape that permeates or permeates all the way through the figure. So the base is what I would push through the mud and it would make that. If I took this square, this rectangle on the bottom and I pushed that through the mud, could I come up with this shape? No. No. So did you see how it has to be like this way? So now I know the base and the top is a triangle, therefore it's a triangular prism. So I got a bunch like that. The next figure is the cube. Okay. I could call really any of the sides the base because all the sides are the same. But I could push that through and create a square prism, or really we call it a cube. A rectangular prism looks like this. Look at the reflection in the. Kind of cool. We're going to learn how to draw shapes with different vantages. Either you might see it like this or like this. Okay. So this is a rectangular prism because it's named by its base. So I could take that shape and push it through. I could actually take this shape and push it through the mud. So it could be a rectangular prism going that way. And maybe, technically speaking, I could take that shape and push it through. And so I could call it still a rectangular prism, but either one of could be a base, but we just to be simple, we need one. All right, if this shape doesn't push through like that, but it all together gathers up at the top to this point, it's called a pyramid, and there's different types of pyramids. This is a square pyramid or rectangular pyramid. What is it called? Get ready. Square rectangular pyramid. Good. When all the faces converge up to the point, that's this point is called an apex. What? Apex. Apex. And you can also have a triangular pyramid. So here the base is a triangle, and they all, they all come up to this apex. And then we've also got cylinders, cones, and spheres. So here's a cylinder-like picture, a can of soup, a, a canister of oatmeal, a leaning tower of pizza, if it wasn't leaning. So again, it's got, a, it's got a top and a base, but since it's curved, it has a different category. It's not in the polyhedron category. It's just a cylinder. And another one with a round base. This one's a cone. What is it called? Get ready. Cone. Spencer? Uh, can't you also say a cube is a rectangular prism? Yes, you can. You definitely can. Okay, good question, Spencer. So then again, a cone, you could lick it. It's an ice cream cone, right? We see these sometimes. Sometimes they have shapes like this at the top of skyscrapers to attract lightning for, as a, a ground. Um, the point of the call at the top, what was that called, think? Get ready? Apex. Apex, good memory, very good. And then the sphere, it's not technically a polyhedron because it's curved, but we've seen spheres, all the basketballs, volleyballs, the earth. Uh, the all earth right. We can name prisms by their bases, so this one's fine. If I took that shape right there, put it in the mud, and pushed it through, I'd end up with this shape. So we name it by its base. If this is a one, two, three, four, five, six sided figure, it's a hexagon, so we call it a hexagonal prism. What is it called? Get ready. Hexagonal, hexagonal prism. prism. Hexagonal prism. We're going to talk about um, faces, edges, and vertices. So why don't I grab this one to do this? 
Here's our rectangular pyramid. Faces, edges, and vertices. I want you all comfortable to know what parts of that on your next test it's going to say. How many edges does this have? How many faces does this have? So a face is what I could put my hand on. That's called a face. What is it called? Get ready. Face. A face. A face. 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 And even a face, even though it's the bottom of it, it's still a face. All right? So I'd have one, two, three, four, five faces. Now an edge is where two faces meet. So these two faces meet on this edge. So think of the edge as like a line. This is called an edge. What? Edge. 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 So I've got an edge, an edge, an edge, an edge. But also I have an edge, 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 and edge. Again, an edge is where two faces meet. Next I have a vertex. A vertex is where, where two or more edges meet. So this edge and this edge and this edge all gather to this point. It's called a vertex. What? Vertex. 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 Still a vertex, even though it's also the apex. Still a vertex. Question, Avery. Why the Why the, oh, because in another experiment, we're going to fill them with water and pour them into other shapes to see how their volumes compare to the question. Okay, so let's pull out this one for fun. Let's count edges and faces. Actually, before we count, I'm going to quiz you. I'm going to put my finger or hand on it. I want you to tell me what is it. Is it a face, edge, or vertices? Face. 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 Edge. Edge. If it said, how many vertices does it have? Vertices is plural for vertex. I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, whoosh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It has twelve vertices. That's plural. If it said, how many faces? I'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces. If it said, how many edges? I'd go, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen edges. So you just count them up. If, have a system though. Like count all of these and all of these and then all of these. So you're not going one, two, three, four. Oh, I lost track of what I was counting. Five, six. I mean, you have a system to it. So I like to do all the bases and then around the outside when you're counting. Okay. We are good at faces, edges, versus. Let's start drawing. I think that's supposed to be down there. Uh, we talked about that. Okay, before we draw, I gotta pop quiz you. Name each figure, what, which is not a polyhedron and why. So you're gonna call students, what is the name of A? Uh, Kaylee. Rectangular, Rectangular prism, what? Rectangular prism. Good. What is the name of B? Emma. Um, pyramid. Good, more specifically, what's the base? Rectangular, Rectangular pyramid, what? Rectangular pyramid. Good. What do we call C? Uh, Preston. A cone. A cone. What? A cone. And then D, if you can see, there is a little dotted line in there. What do we call D? Uh, Jasmine. Uh, that's a tri triangular prism. Very good. Triangular prism. What? Triangular. Very good. Can you name each figure? Oh, uh, which is not a polyhedron? Let's take a class vote. Which one's not a polyhedron? Get ready? C. C has curved edges. Perfect. You guys knew it. All right, now we're going to draw. How do you draw a cylinder? So uh, the way we do parallel projections is we do a base and a top. Try to make them the same size. Oh, no, wait a minute. If I'm doing a cylinder, Aren't cylinders round, like a circle? Why did I draw a squished circle? Because if I turn this to you guys, to your to your perspective, the more I turn it, doesn't it turn into an oval from your vantage? And then like right there, you almost can't even see it, but right there, it's like a squished oval. So it's really round. Connect your outside. But now wait a minute, if this was really a soup can, can I see this back edge at all? I can't see it. But mathematically, we want to represent it that it's there, and we use a dotted line. So keep your dotted line on any edge that you can't see. 
Okay. If you, unless you're Superman. How do you draw a rectangular prism? So let's do a rectangle. Again, we're going to do the parallel projection. I'm going to do this one offset. Try to make your rectangles the same size. Connect your vertices. Upper right, lower right. <coughs> then you have to decide how does your eye see this? Are you seeing the top of it? Are you looking at it from underneath? And then after I kind of settle in what my brain wants to see, this is what my brain saw, right? But mathematically, we should keep our dot, our dotted lines in there so we can see the face is easier. That way I can count edges and faces and make sure when I'm doing surface area, I can count for all the surfaces. And then a pyramid, draw a parallelogram. That was not a very good parallelogram. Let's try it back. Okay, then look at your front edge. Find about the middle of it and go straight up. I'll do a tall pyramid. Connect each base vertice up to your apex. And then you have to decide on how am I seeing it? Am I seeing it from underneath? I'm going to throw your brain for one for a second. Did anybody see it like that? Ethan, did you see it like that? So I kind of drew it so you're looking at underneath. Can you tell that? You're looking underneath it. But I can easily play games with your brain and do that. You see it different now? It's kind of brown. So I'm going to put it back in there with a the dotted line. When you draw on your worksheet, you must have dotted lines. So decide how you're going to see it and use your eraser or redraw it with your dotted line. All right, the last part of our lesson, and then I'll set you guys to work on a drawing worksheet, is how to do multi-view projection displays with three-dimensional objects. So maybe you're an architect and you're designing a new city library and you want to sell your idea. You've got to be able to draw it as if, let me move this up a little bit. Say, you know what, our customers or our, our uh, community members are gonna come in and when they walk into this building, they're gonna see this beautiful face, but they might also be over here and they might see it this way. So I'm gonna draw for you what they're gonna see is if they're standing in that location and maybe some VIPs are gonna be flying in their private jet and they're gonna be looking from the top, what will they see of our new city library? So, this is a multi-view projection. First, we gotta be able to draw the actual shape. So I'm gonna show you, that's called the isometric view. What is it called, get ready? Isometric view. Isometric view, that's the hardest one to draw, so I'm gonna get that done and get it out of the way. So I'm gonna take this uh, rectangular prism right here, I'm gonna try to copy it. I know it's on an angle, but this is vertical. That's parallel, vertical. That's on an angle, angle, vertical, angle, parallel. Then I got this big one just coming up. This one's coming up. This, this little short guy's got to be parallel to this, right? And it comes down, parallel, angled, parallel, parallel, vertical, parallel. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. I might have missed that angle a little bit. Okay? That's our isometric view. So some of you say, I'm supposed to draw an isometric what? You're just copying it. But now let's draw what this person sees. They don't see it like this. If they're it's a small guy, they're going to see this rectangle and it's going to be right in front of them. Is it going to be like diagonal? No, it's going to be like a rectangle right in front. So they're going to see this. They're going to see this rectangle right here. I'm going to put a smiley. That's what they're seeing right there. But then they, they don't see this face and they don't see this face, but they would see this. It looked like a little square right there. And they're going to see this L shaped, and it's going to look like it's right above this one. And I'm going to draw a cloud right here. Okay, so you can kind of keep track of the faces. What does this person see? I'm going to call this the front view. Maybe this is the side view, depending on how you look at it. This guy's going to see maybe a moon right there on that face. He won't see the star, but he'll see the moon. And it's going to, to him, look like a square. You're going to see some stars in that square. Okay, one more. And then maybe here we'll see 
three lines just for fun. <laughs> are they going to see the tops? No. Are they going to see these sides? No. But they will see this one right there. And this one's going to be a spiral. Do you see how I'm drawing shapes just so you can kind of see what, how this maps onto this? And then our last view is the top guy. I'm going to do the big dots right here. Three big dots. Square, 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 dot, dot, dot. And then these two first dots, there's a rectangle here. I'm going to do a big long wave. And it goes that far to two of the dots. Yeah. That's how we do, we draw every advantage of the projection. So you guys are going to get a turn to do that. I've got a shape ready for you. On your worksheet, worksheet you'll draw side, front, top, but you'll also make your own copy of the isometric view. When you're done with your worksheet, you're going to do some, also some cylinders and rectangular prisms. You are going to do an extension activity. You can turn to page 275 or I can just tell you right now, I'm going to give you some dice. You're going to build your own little city library, whatever shape you want. It could be a tower, it could be long, it could be L, whatever. And you're going to draw it. I don't have enough room on your worksheet to do that, so do it on a lined piece of paper, and that's part of your homework. So let's get this uh, worksheet passed out.